Hi, in this video, I'll talk about Azure Load Balancer. So, what is the Azure Load Balancer? Basically, it's a device which helps us in evenly distributing the traffic across the various backend server. And the important thing is this Azure Load Balancer, it operates on the layer 4 and it will be a single point of contact for all the virtual machines. So, if you see here in this diagram, a client or anyone is trying to contact, but he has to just contact the load balancer and then the load balancer will take care of redirecting it to any of the VM machine. So that is the important task of this load balancer. So we have already mentioned what is the load balancer. Now, why to use a load balancer? Microsoft has mentioned few of the scenarios which we can accomplish with the load balancer. So those are, it helps us in load balancing internal and external traffic to the virtual machines. It increases availability by distributing resources within and across the zones. It configure outbound connectivity for Azure virtual machines. We can set the health probes. It employ port forwarding and it enables support for load balancing for IPv6. So these are the few things which I have just added. But if you want, I'll just add the link. You can go through other scenarios also, which we can accomplish for using the by using the Azure load balancer. Now, what are the types of load balancer? Standard and the basic are the two types of load balancer. The major difference is more configuration is available in the standard. I have just highlighted few of the configurations here. You can just pause this video and just go through it. And there are more things which are available in the standard load balancer, which are not there in the basic load balancer. I'll again add the link. You can just go through it. Microsoft says, if you're going for the production, just use the standard load balancer, not the basic one. So if you are just doing some POC or doing some other work, go for the basic, but in case of production scenarios, go for the standard load balancer. So there are a few key components we have to configure whenever we are talk about the Azure load balancer. So the first key component is the front end IP configuration. Basically that's a single point of contact for your clients and it will be IP address of the load balancer and it can be a public IP address or the private IP address. The next is the backend pool. All the backend servers, all the virtual machines, we will just put it in this backend pool. So it is a critical component of the load balancer and it defines the group of the machines on which the load balancer is going to distribute the traffic. So there are two ways how we can configure the backend pool. One is with the network interface card and another is IP address. And in this video, I'll show how to configure using the IP address. Now, the next key component is the health probe. So basically, load balancer keep on checking if all the machines in the backend pool are healthy or not. And if it finds any machine is unhealthy, it will not send the traffic to the particular machine. So that's the use of the health probe. Now, the next key component is the load balancer rules. So load balancer rule is used to define how incoming traffic is going to be distributing to the backend pool. So we have to define basically the ports of the front end IP configuration as well as the backend IP configuration. In this video, I'll be using the default port as an 80, but if you want, you can just go and use a different port also. In the load balancer rule, you need to define the particular port. So that I'll show you in the video, how we are going to do that. So in the last, I'll just mention what we are going to do next is, first we have to create the virtual machines, VM1 and VM2. And while creating the VM1, I'll create the virtual network. So that we will be using in the VM2. So our both of these VMs will be in the same network. And then we will enable the IIS in the VMs. So by default, it will not be enabled. So we have to go and enable it. And then we have to create the load balancer. And while creating the load balancer, I'll create the front-end IP configuration. Once load balancer is created, we'll create the backend pool and add this VM in the backend pool. We will configure the health probe. And at the last, we will just configure the load balancing rule. Once all these steps are done, we can just go and check if the load balancer is working fine, if it is redirecting us to these the VMs. And one more thing which I will do, I'll just switch off the VM2 and see if it is redirecting us to the only VM1 or not. Let's just jump directly into the Azure portal without wasting any time. I'm into portal.azure.com. So what we will do, we'll first go and create the virtual machine. And in that machine itself, we'll create the VNet, which we need. And let me click on the virtual machines and click on the virtual machine again. And first I have to create the resource group. So let me say Rohit load val group, click OK. 
then virtual machine name i'll say vm1 region i'll go with the west us2 security type standard image i'll select the windows server 2019 by default it has been selected for me and i'll say give it some name and the password and inbound ports i'll select http and https rdp is by default selected yes yes click next preview msd i'm okay with that click on networking now here you have to create the virtual network so i'll click on create new and i will just say vnet rohit address range i'm okay i'm also okay with that i'll just change the subnet name i'll say subnet click ok this is good and one important thing for the ip address we have to create the standard ip address so by default it has created the basic so i'll go ahead and select the standard this is very important because the load balancer which we are going to create will be of the standard type so that's the reason we need a standard ip so click ok once you select that and every other thing looks good so i'll not go and select any other options by default it has been selected click on review plus create then click on create so the resource is created and i'll click on go to resource to connect to this virtual machine i need to click here but first i'll go and see the vnet yes the vnet is also created and the ip is also created so this looks good now we will go and create the next vm for that i'll click on home click on virtual machines click on create click on virtual machine again and i'll select the resource group which i have created just back and i'll name it as vm2 region it has selected and it has selected the image also size also i'm good with that i'll just give this some name and http https looks good this also looks good click on disks this is good on the networking now it has selected the vnet rohit which we have created at the time of vm1 creation so this is also good the only thing which we have to change here is the ip address we have to select standard click ok and now one important thing if your load balancer is already created you can add this vm into the load balancer by selecting these options since our load balancer is not created we'll go and create we'll go and add this machine once the load balancer is created so i'll click on review plus create because all the other option looks good and then click on create so the vm2 is created so what we will do we'll go and enable the is in the virtual machines so i'll click to go to resource and i'll connect to this vm first and i'll click on the rdp i have to enter the credentials so i'm able to connect to the vm so when you open this vm by default it will open the server manager in case it does not you can go to start and then open it and in the server manager click on manage and click on add roles and features so it is still uh, opening and it is still working on that so we have to just wait for a minute click on manage click on add roles and features and it will pop up this window click next again click next this also looks good click on next now we have to select web server here if you want and you can select any other options also click on add feature and click next here also the, it has added some features based upon your need you can enable or disable something but i'll go with the default click next and click next again click on install so the installation of is it will take around 1 to 2 minutes so we just have to wait so the installation is completed click on close now go to start and type inet here basically it will bring the internet information service is click on that 
expand this expand the sites also on the default website right click and go to explorer and on the is start the html page right click and open with notepad and i just want to add one thing here vm2 basically whenever the load balancer is going to redirect us to either vm1 or vm2 i just want to understand on which vm it has redirected us so that's the reason i'm just adding the vm2 click on close and just open this letter cool so vm2 has been added this looks good now we'll go and do the same in the vm1 now to enable the is in the vm1 i'll go to the azure we'll go to the resource group i'll click on vm1 i'll click on connect click on rdp download the rdp file just say connect now in the vm1 go to manage click on add roles and features click next 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 click on web server is add features click next 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 again next and click on install and again it will take a moment to install the is in vm1 so the installation is completed click on close and go to start type inet and it will bring the internet information service manager expand this expand the site also right click go to explore in the is start right click open with notepad and in the body say vm1 save close double click to open just to confirm okay close go back cool so this looks good we are good here now let us go and add the load balancer for that i'll go to the azure portal and i'll go to home and click on the load balancers and if this option is not coming you can just type in the search and click on create In the resource group, select the resource group which we have just created and type the name. So I'll say Rohit Load Balancer and region it has selected. Now, SKU, we are going to select standard. So that was the reason I mentioned you to select the IP address as in the standard. So this also looks good. I'll go ahead with the public load balancer, not the internal, but if you want, you can go with that. So I'll select the default option as a public and then click on front and IP configuration. Click on the plus. Now we have to give some names. So I'll say front end. And for the IP address, I'll say create new and availability zone. I'll say no zone. Click on OK. Click add. And once the load balancer is created, then I'll add the backend pool and other things. So for now, click on review plus create. Then click on create. So the resource is created. Click on go to resource. And I'll click on the front end IP configuration. And this is the IP address which we are going to use it. Cool. So we are good here. Next, we'll create the backend pool. For that, I'll click on the backend pool. Click on add and I have to give some name. So I'll say backend pool and I have to select the virtual network, which we have created. So VNet Rohit is the one. Now, if you see here, you can only attach virtual machine in the West USU that have a standard SKU public IP configuration. So that was the reason I mentioned we have to create the public IP address of SKU, uh, standard SKU. Only then we can able to add the virtual machine in this backend pool. So click on add and here we can see the virtual machines, which we have created select both click on add and then click on add so the backend pool is created cool we are good here now next we have to add the health probes for that i'll click on the health probe 
click on add and I'll name it as health probe and protocol now by default it has selected TCP there are other options like HTTP and HTTPS so I'll go with the TCP and if you select the HTTP or HTTPS you need to give the path basically you need to mention the HTML file or any file so that it will try to access that and if it does not then it will just move this uh, move the particular machine into a unhealthy so I'll select that as TCP and port 80 we are good interval now it is going to check every five seconds and for the consecutive two failures if it does not able to find the particular machine as in healthy it will just move that machine into unhealthy status so all the options looks good to me so I'll just click on add so health probe is created cool we are good here all now next we will go and create the load balancing rule for that I have to click on the load balancing rules click on add and we have to name it as load balance rule and front end IP address we all we have already created so I'll select that back end pool we have also created I'll select that port 80 will go with and back end port also same health probe also we have created so I'll select that session persistence so I'll say none but if you want you can go with the client IP and client IP protocol what does this mean is for example if any client is trying to access the virtual machines every time until the session remains it will redirect it to same machine so I'll select none and TCP there is a disabled floating IP also disabled all the other options remain same click on add so the load balancing rule is also created cool we are good here now all the steps are done what we will do we will try to access this load balancer or the VMs so I'll just go to front end IP configuration copy the IP address go to the browser and just paste it cool so it has redirected us to vm1 i'll just refresh and see if it redirects me to any other no i'll open the incognito window and type this cool so if you see it has redirected me to vm2 now what i will do i'll close the vm1 i'll go back here i'll just refresh multiple times so i am into vm2 what i will go what i will do I'll go to VM2 and I'll just stop it and I'll go back to the browser and let me see if it keeps me oh now if you see for a minute of the second it was showing service unavailable now it automatically redirects me to VM1 so now I'm on to VM1 so this is how the load balancer works cool so we are good here so this concludes this video if you like the video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends thank you